All right. Good morning. Thanks, everyone. My name is Chris Rosen. Uh, I've got a very tight five-minute timeline that I've been told I need to adhere to or else. Uh, so what we want to do is quickly kind of talk through something that is not a new story to anyone in this room, at least I assume not. And that's about you know, being able to run workloads and being aware of constant attacks. Anyone that you know, has kids in that age group of playing Fortnite, or maybe you play it yourselves, you're fully aware of uh, you know, the constant attack that you're under, as well as the uh, time suck that that game turns into. So once upon a time, think about as a developer, I'm sitting down and I've written this fantastic idea and I've scripted it up and I'm, you know, I'm using containers and microservices and all the, you know, the modern technology to be able to run and develop this new application. But I've done so in the confines of my laptop, which are great. But now I need to take that application to the prime time state. So how do I go through that transformation? That developer that we started with, just like you, just like the entire ecosystem, has chosen Kubernetes as that container orchestration. Two years ago, it was really a hot discussion over which type of orchestration you were going to leverage and build on top of. Today, clearly, Kubernetes and all of the benefits that are inherent to it with auto recovery and auto scaling and deployments and load balancing. So she's chosen that, right? So now the next step in that transformation is where do I run that? So what she does is she goes and she talks to her. She puts in a support ticket for her IT team. And he says, oh, well, we don't have a Kubernetes cluster yet. I'm really busy, you know, rewiring the data center. So she's hit this roadblock. What do I do? So she comes up with a little brain baby and says, the cloud. I will run this workload in the cloud. I will be able to take this super awesome application that I just developed, run it in the cloud. We've all been here before. Her, what I like to call the internal mall cops. Some people may not like that affectionate term as much and think of security or your CISO. Says, no, we're not ready to run that. You can't deploy your own shadow IT and start running workloads in the cloud. Now, there are a number of managed services, not only in IBM Cloud, but every other cloud that you may have already heard of, uh, jumping on board with Kubernetes as that orchestration platform. So some of the things that you'll get in IBM, you know, around simplified deployment, lifecycle management, integrated operational tools, compute isolation, including bare metal. So as she's trying to think about how do I run that application and how do I move it to the cloud and do so in a secure way? So out of the box, kind of the first environment is I create this cluster. I've got my ALBs. I've got my super cool new application all running, containerized. But you can see here, everything is fully accessible on the front side network. And therefore, you know, I really have a lot of risk. I have a large attack surface for all of my worker nodes in that cluster. So what do I do? So we'll play out this demo here. So I couldn't type this fast. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to log in. This is a beautiful shell script. Most likely, you're going to automate this with Terraform or some other automation tool of your choice to be able to handle all of this lifecycle management. So essentially, what we're doing, first, we're going to log in. Now, the next step is we're going to create this cluster. Nice, long, lots of options, things that you can configure and tweak. Again, you'll probably do this once, but then you're going to go forward and automate it in something repeatable and auditable with Terraform. Now that it's deployed, I'm going to go through and I'm going to actually check and check the health around the cluster itself, as well as the health of all of the worker nodes that are running inside that cluster. And then the last step four that we're going to do here is actually deploy this super secret, very impressive application that I had started out developing on my laptop. Now I'm going to run that out in the cloud. 
can see through, it's going to go through. We're going to deploy some pods and services, and we're going to get normal health check on things that are happening. And once it's done, it's going to open up a browser, and we're going to see, well, it wasn't that great of an app, but it was just a guestbook app. So what did we actually do out of all of that? That command line, that long string of stuff, essentially what we did is create a Kubernetes cluster that leverages, creates three different worker pools. One is like a DMZ where I've got my firewall, I've got my gateway, all of my traffic routes through that. Then I've got an edge worker pool where my application load balancers reside, and then all of my intellectual property is running down here completely segregated and air-gapped from the rest of the outside world. When we look at, you know, you could do the same thing in the UI if you're a, a point-click, love pretty pictures. You can do that through the UI as well. You can see the health. You can see the three different worker pools that I had. And then lastly is that you know, we're here to help you be successful in that transformation, in that journey, wherever you are with cloud native application development or app modernization, running it in a managed service so that way you focus just on your line of business. So with that, I will stop. Pretty close to our time.